He likes winning. <laughs> How much I do know. But for me, as we said, Noble Yates, our protector, our protector rat has possibly proven at that level, having been third in the Gold Cup. <laughs> no offence for the Irish Buccaneer, but he wasn't the forefront of my mind when I was thinking about retiring. <laughs>welcome to episode 10 of the inside track brought to you by william hill now you may have noticed we're in a slightly different format this week gone are the small little zoom squares where you can see our faces in because we're here in person for very good reason because i'm being joined by two very very special guests roll out the green and gold carpet because we have two william hill ambassadors as well as racing royalty sir a p mccoy and brand new william hill racing ambassador barry garrity guys great to have you both here with me ap how are thank you? you good thanks kit all good good and barry great yeah. to join the team good yeah thanks kate yeah, brilliant to get on board um yeah a couple of good ambassadors i think to a good stable of ambassadors i could say exactly a very yeah we've got a good string haven't we to be fair of you all lined up now now i have got these guys here for very good reason sake because we have so much to talk about we're going to be reviewing the action from the dublin racing festival we're going to be looking ahead to the biggest race of them all the gold cup as our anti-post race in focus as well as that we have more action this weekend from newbury and warwick and there are also some very poignant discussion topics that we're going to be covering in our debate section as well but before we cover all of that, it's about time we got to know the lads that bit better. So I hope a pair of you are ready for this. Avi, you've already had one of these grillings of these questions, but Barry is obviously new to this. Don't tell him about it because, of course, a pair of you two <laughs> did ride in JP's very famous green and gold silk. So it's time to pick your brains a little bit more about JP, what he was like to ride for. So Barry, your opinion, how did you, how did you find JP to ride for? Brilliant. Um, I suppose his insight, his knowledge, um, understanding, yeah, really, really surprised me. But his interest as well at every level. Mm -hmm. So no, he's he's. Uh, I would have learned a lot from JP over the years, even before I took over after AP retired. You know, I rode my second festival when I was for JP. So I'd ridden a lot from from a young age, and yeah, he was always someone you you tended to pick up a little nugget of wisdom off now and again. And if you, I guess you completely second those. Yeah, thoughts. yeah. He likes winning. How much <laughs> I do know. I golfed with him a few weeks ago and he won money off me at his handout on the green waiting for it. <laughs> I, <laughs> should, I should actually he play golf for him so then because he yeah. definitely would win then. Yeah, he, li he, li <laughs> he, li he, li he likes winning. But as Barry said, yeah, obviously he's a great knowledge uh, of the sport, but unbelievably, unbelievable passion for it. Absolutely yeah. loves it at every level. You know, everyone wants to go and win at all the big festivals. Mm -hmm. But he likes watching racing, you know, Monday to Sunday, right, right, right through the week. And the other thing that he does, he has a great love for the horse. Great love for the horse. You know, you only got to go down to Martinstown and Isterbrack is like... 30 years old now, is he? Uh, 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 you know, the old boy. When he's at home, straight down there, give him carrots and he has, you know, it's, you know, it's his birthday. He has birthday cakes and he has the whole thing. And it's like not just Isterbrack. But, but just, all of them. Yeah, all of them. the Kudra, there's loads yeah. of old stars there. Yeah, just a, pu a pure passion yeah. for the game through yeah, and through, yeah, the whole yeah. way through. And Barry, do you remember your first ride for JP? Um, I was would have been claiming five, I'd say. Could have been a horse bit of a while back then, yeah, no offence. Could have been a horse called Moratorium, I'm, maybe. Did you That's win though, I'm guessing not? Probably not, no I didn't. Uh, remember the first winner I think I rode for was a mare called Aunt Aggie for Edward O'Grady, I think. I was mm. claiming five. Oh, that's a good memory. How's your memory for your first ride? Mine was easy. Mine was my Asta, who was the dam of Synchronised. Oh, okay. I got a spare ride on her in Punchestown in 1996. That and is. she actually ran the day before. I keep slagging Charlie Swan. He rode the day before and he must have rode her really badly because she won the following day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, um, and Frank Berry was training her at the time, um, mm. who, who's JP's race manager. So there was a lot of, it was easy to remember my Asta. And tell you, she, she, above all the horses that, JP has tried to purchase to win a Chatham Gold Cup or win, and uh, his wife Noreen bred him his only mm -hmm. Gold Cup winner at my Asta. So yeah, a um, home bred. So it was easy to remember my that, first winner. Yeah. That is, and also you can get a, give a bit of slag into Charlie Swan as well along the way. So I, I regularly, I regularly do. <laughs> Most people, yeah. You know. Twenty many years on, you're still yeah. giving Charlie. He didn't it get away much, did he? Yeah. <laughs> Still yeah. brings it up though, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you will yeah. for the foreseeable yeah. as well. A long time ago, 1996, God, I'd be 27 years and it was not... Quick maths, ah, well done. Yeah, so. Now, you say about JP obviously being such a lover of the sport and so understanding of the sport, which is so key to an owner, but did you have a disagreement with him ever? 
Uh, do I have disagreements? Yeah, I think pro loads of disagreements. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I, yeah, I think I had plenty of disagreements. You know, and we just kind of like you kind of know when he stops talking. You know that that's <laughs> he doesn't agree with what you say, but you say it anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, I think he's very fair, and he's you know he likes the truth, and he he's pretty honest. You know, but you know if everyone has opinions don't you don't always agree with someone's opinion do no matter how much you respect them or how much you know that you think you sometimes you always think you have more don't you so and <laughs> and there's a little stubborn trait definitely in me just a little but um, you do surprise us all but as i said he he's a fair he's a very he's a fair man i remember coming uh i was flying back out of birmingham back to dublin one uh night after being in Cheltenham that day and I got beaten on, I think it was Le Prezien in a good two mile handicap chase. Mm. And uh, phoned up JP and I was saying, sorry, you know, it's just, and I was only beating the neck or so. And um, I was kicking myself that I, I just had delayed too long. And um, he said, you know what, that race was lost. And I'm kind of, oh, what's he going to say? I, I, I thought I'd explain what had happened. He said, that race was lost over the first four events. He said, he, he, said he didn't jump well enough. Mm. Now, I was obviously delighted to get the lifeline. But on <laughs> reflection, the ground I lost over the first four fences had me further back than I wanted to be, which meant my challenge, I had more ground to make up to make my challenge. So, But just to have that level of insight, it was something that I'd never really thought about. Owners or trainers generally don't reflect back to that early stage. It's usually in the last mile, half mile. So yeah, that was a, as I said, it was a lifeline I got, but it was, yeah, that's the depth of the, his understanding. Again, like you say, mm. kind of the level of appreciation he has for the race. So if he has an opinion, you respect his opinion and you just have to take it on the chin then for something like that. Now, of course, Barry, you did take over from AP in the JP job. So did you discuss sort of rides when you were taking over rides from AP then? Did you kind of go and, and tap him on the shoulder for any advice or anything like that? Yeah, I would have done. Um, but I suppose a lot of the horses I would have known, say Nicky's, for example, mm. uh, I would have known from them. A lot of them I'd ridden as well. Yeah. But we would have, oh, definitely, AP was always, and even all the way through, while I was riding for JP, you would be discussing tactics or even just hopping the ball with each other. What would you think here or there? Um, you know, just playing with, with ideas. So we'd have always, but we always got on well. You know, as competitors, there's plenty of days we would have. I think that's the thing about jump racing, isn't it? You know, that yeah. you have, you're, jump racing is different. I keep saying that there's two animals going around behind you. The majority of the lads, you know, much now they want to beat one another, they have great respect for one another, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, that's the one thing I always found in the way room. As a jump jockey, you always, yeah, you wanted to beat the lad beside you and all that. But it's different than a lot of other sports in terms of, you know, to some, unfortunately, you look across the lad, you might be going to hospital to pick him up that mm. evening or something, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it is different in that, in that sense. Um, but you definitely... There's definitely a competitiveness in the jump in, as a jump jockey. That's you know you have to have a little bit of a madness in you to want to do it in the first place. But mm. um, a shared madness. I shared, think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, you can your brothers in arms with that. Anyway, you yeah. can all relate to each oh, yeah. other. Now, did you have any say, AP, in Barry getting the job? I, I think he, it was a pretty obvious. You know, obviously, I'd spoke to JP and Frank. A few of us had spoke. I think it was pretty obvious that he was. You know, because you want to. You know, obviously being still involved with JP and that you want the horses to do, you know, you want the best for the, you know, you want the best for everyone. And Barry was the best, you know, in terms of what I thought anyway. And, and, and look, we all have opinions, you know what I mean? But um, you didn't have to be Einstein to work out that, you know, that Barry Gertie was a pretty obvious choice. And the fact that he'd actually ridden big winners for him and, uh, you know, beforehand made it pretty easy. Um, so um, you want to, you know, I think Christy Roach always said that you, you know, whatever about having a fella riding for you, you don't really want him riding against you. And, and, I, and I think that's, you know, that, that's what made it it's backwards pretty obvious. Then. Yeah, exactly. The, be yeah. the best sort of confident. But obviously with Barry taking over and, and your retirement obviously was a very, clearly a very emotional time. It's been mm. well documented. But were there any horses that you saw Barry go out and riding them that you were sort of thinking, oh, I wish that was me? Uh, yeah, look, there always is. And that's the, that's the hardest thing about the first year. And Barry, I'll tell you, the first year or two you go into retirement, you get off a horse that you think has the potential. I mean, the one horse at the time, he actually didn't turn out too bad that I really liked as a novice hurdler was Manila Rocco. You know, I kind of thought he ended up he won a, a four miler beating it if River and then if River beat him in a Gold Cup. And I remember winning a novice hurling him in Kempton one day and thinking to myself, God, this horse could be a Gold Cup horse because he just had a load of he just had you know, he just had a lot about him. Mm. So there are there are there are horses like that. 
But I think that happens there, and, and, and the same will have happened with Barry. He'll have ridden horses in races, and you think and that's why it's much easier now because all of the horses that you used to ride are retired as well, and you don't see any more of them, so it's not really that's, you don't have any affiliation that, with them. That's how he is, but no, I'm yeah. still watching Epitant and yeah. some of those, yeah, yeah, which is fine. I wouldn't, um, personally, um, retirement would have, I won't say came easy, but actually, when I, when I did retire and got out of the fast lane. You know, it it comes at a price. Mm. So you're you're kind of there was horses there you'd love to ride, but you can't just turn up on a Saturday. You know, you have to put in the hard yards all week as well. So you know that balance is there. Um, and I suppose it. Yeah, I was I was more ready for it than I thought when it happened. Mm. Um, so it didn't bother me. It was Chantry House had won in Cheltenham the following year. Um, he won the Turners, and the race was over before I realised. Oh, that would have been my one. Yeah. So really? it's, yeah, it's it's it it, it just depends, and, and for me, lockdown actually made it easier because racing didn't seem as much fun during that. So I was it let me down a bit. bit it gave you that bit of space, and it yeah. gave you a that's, bit of separation. That's from the that. ego inside him. There was no one there no, to watch. No, him, one, so. no applause. No <laughs> applause this time. Yeah, exactly. Oh no, I don't want to waste it out on an empty winners' enclosure. Yeah, yeah. No point. Well, in that. well, you'd pick up on that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Now, a pair of you two, very different in the saddle, I think, by general yeah. consensus from what we see. But Barry, what do you think the main differences between the pair of your riding styles was? Um, he was more stylish. <laughs> that's the bit of the, <laughs> the, bar, the bar is pretty low. That's the case. <laughs> um, I don't know. There was a really great difference, was there? No, it's similar in lots of ways and probably very different in all. What others. are the similarities, do you think? <clears throat> I'd say both... Uh, you know, completely committed in the moment, you know, like you go to the last, you talk about jockeys, who would you want to be upsides? And I think we were reasonably strong to both in well, terms of like... But, but committed, the last, yeah. you would go to the last as if it wasn't there. Yeah. And I know that would be the case yeah. alongside AP, yeah. that would be the case alongside Ruby, Paul Carberry, Davy Russell, you know, there's, there's, but there's other days, even you'd square up with someone, you might be thinking, yeah, I have a chance here of just getting one over. Be just because it's... For me, it's actually just to go blind in that moment and you're just, all the chips are in. Do you agree with that, AP? Yeah, always. You know, you got to, you know, the, the, it's all about calculated risk, isn't it? You know, mm. you got to take the risk. And I often used to think at the end of the year, I used to look through, I used to look through the amount of falls I had and I used to think, was it good that I had more falls or was it bad that I had mm. less falls? Because if I had less falls, was I not taking enough chances? <laughs> yes. Yeah. If I was more falls, was I being reckless? It's quite the paradox, <laughs> yeah. actually, isn't it? Really, for you to... You <laughs> start looking up, you think, into. oh, but I had more rides this year and yet only had 50-odd falls, thinking, like, what happened? Yeah. Was I being minding myself or... You know, <laughs> so it's just, I mean, I, I, I would never think about it in terms of when actually, you, when you go out on a horse, I think that's, you go out with an idea and a plan, then it all just, it all, you know, I think there was... I think that it's all it becomes a, a little bit instinctive but the more mm. you do it I suppose the instinct becomes better really mm. if you like so but afterwards then, uh, I, I was an analyzer do you know what I mean yes. I was just I, I think it was just the probably the people that I ended up working for you know starting off with Jim Budger because he'd asked you everything about everything and then when I started working with Martin Pipe I was writing reports every night so there was no such thing as passing them a story do you know mm. because he'd hopes. he'd come along I'd write a report every day about every horse I rode. He could come along six months later and tell me what I'd said six months earlier, or a year and a half earlier, about a certain horse that I'd never went over, that had been over two miles, that wouldn't went over three miles, or vice versa. And he goes, you wrote that down a year and a half ago. So, wow. So God, there's there was, no escaping anything that so, you said or thought then at that point. So so you just don't go back in afterwards after riding a horse and pass off some story you think that yeah. will be forgot about the next day. So Can't you, you end up analysing everything. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, but it's just so it's just it's just look I, I it was something that I I found definitely made would I think it doesn't make you any worse anyway that's for sure yeah no definitely, definitely. but I think Barry will tell you when it comes to actually going out and riding race you have to have all that goes out the window doesn't it? you think your own thing then a bit yeah and that's interesting to hear you say it <clears throat> I probably without sounding complacent or mean to sound complacent probably would have um had a more laid back approach. I wouldn't have analyzed as much. You'd obviously watch replays back, see where you went wrong, 
wouldn't watch it at the second or third time unless I really You'd had have to. to. You wouldn't be able yeah, to leave it was, as that. Yeah, just, yeah, okay, right, I that know. That takes yeah. a lot of mental strength, though, for a jockey yeah. to be able to do even that, not to go keep reiterating it over and over. Yeah, so I'd, I'd, I'd rather, you know, learn from it, but don't, not to torture myself and potentially restrict your your belief in your own instinct. Mm. So I'd, I'd rather go in with an open book and probably, I suppose, the further on down in my career, I would have been very much trust your instinct. Yeah. And on the big day, if you start thinking the what ifs, what nots, just know, think back, right, okay. You, you know your horse, you understand them. Now you would have gone through a whole, and I would have done that, gone through a whole visualization of, you know, possible scenarios, but like that as well, you've had these scenarios throughout your career. So mm -hmm. in the moment when something happens, you react based on experience, whether that's real time or stuff you would have thought about. Um, so for me, it was very much so. Trust your instinct, and yeah, it was. It probably fed itself that when yeah. things go right, if you acknowledge them that they've gone right, you won't cripple yourself with self doubt on what might go wrong. So it's it's a bit of a mind game, and it, it's whatever works for the individual. A massive amount of mind games. I feel like we've got into a mindset of a pair of you two, and it's fascinating hearing that. And obviously, people watching on nowadays to translate it to jockeys nowadays, it will be fascinating to hear. Now, one final question for the pair of you two. This is a bit of self indulgence to me, though. Now, I have led up the pair of you two to win, but I want to ask you: Can you remember? the horses that you won on. Now, you better remember, because I told you this back in August, so this is shameful if you can't remember a piece. You're up first. Well, it, but I worked for Philip Hobbs, led you both up for one winner apiece. Uh, Lots of losers, but one winner apiece. What was the horse? I can, I can give you three clues for you. I can give you the date. Go on then. God, makes me feel old. May 2014. May, tw May 2014. Uh -huh. May. That doesn't, make, the track that, as well. that doesn't make it any easier if it was May because like, it, it, your summer, it wasn't particularly summer clause a, anyway. You're getting for your and that was for Philip Hobbs. It wasn't a uh, it wasn't a champion then by any means. Not by any means <laughs> at Ludlow. Oh, oh no, no, <laughs> Graham was you, quick. Um, you found him too keen when he finished at Kempton a year previously. Finished second at Kempton. You were giving out that he was too keen. Not a clue. Previously owned by Carola Van. Uh, and you've heard Bold this Henry. before. No, not Bold Henry. Yeah, same you owner, this a few months same, ago. same owner, though, wasn't it? Bold yeah. Henry. Yeah, yeah. It was Chestnut, was it, with a white nope. face? No. It was Bay and it was Irish Buccaneer. Oh, yeah. Very okay. well done. Yeah, Told him that back in August. Barry, so, you've got more leeway. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no offense for Irish Buccaneer, but he. It wasn't the forefront of my mind when I was thinking about retiring. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't maybe make he was. the TV. <laughs> maybe that's why. I can't believe that you uh, can't remember that. Did, you didn't tell me when I came back in that I should retire by any chance, no? Oh, I did hint at it okay. after you couldn't find it too keen at Kempton okay, when he was the yeah. biggest bus in the yard. But anyway, Thanks. Barry, yours was uh, the 30th of January 2017 at Plumpton. Plumpton. <laughs> For Philip Hobbs. For Philip as well. As well. For Philip Hobbs as well. Um... His British and Rules debut. He's still going now. British and Rules debut. And he He's went on and won another novice title at Weatherby with you riding him on his next start. Jerry's back. Yes. Oh. There you go. Barry pays attention. Yeah. Thanks, Barry, for Jerry's remembering back. that. Yeah. Slightly easier to remember than Irish Buccaneer. <laughs> yeah, Irish no Buccaneer. No disrespect to Irish Buccaneer. The but... wonder horse that was Irish Buccaneer. Thank you for indulging me anyway, yeah. even though AP completely Please. forgot everything of uh, of my one of the best days of my leading up career. But glad to see that one of us remembers anyway. So that was getting to know a little bit more about Barry and AP. Well, I really hope you're enjoying this episode of the Inside Track. But before we move on to the next section just a reminder to like and subscribe to William Hill's YouTube channel and do leave us a comment below with any of your opinions on what we've discussed. Our anti-post race in focus this week ahead of the Charlton Festival is the big one, the blue ribboned event of National Hunt Racing and who better to ask than Barry Geraghty and AP about this race. Two winners of the Gold Cup for each of them as well. Now the betting with us here at William Hill currently reads as follows with Galloping Deschamps still heading the way as a 6-4 favourite, a Plutard 5-1 Noble Yates at 7-1, to which is the same price about Statler. Then we finally have a British horse with Brave Man's Game in there at 8-1, to and it's 10-1 to bar. So AP kicking us off with the Gold Cup. Yeah, look, I don't think Gallup and the Champ will have put any people off his performance uh, at the DRF. Um, pretty professional, jumped pretty well, seemed to relax, which a lot of people would have thought maybe was a little, you know, he looked a really fast horse as a novice. Um, but he settled really well in the John Durkin and did so again at 
uh, a leper's town. Um, and I suppose from the last, you know, he looked like it was a little bit of, not trouble, but he looked like he was going to have to get a little squeeze between off the bend and going to the last. But I think from the last to the winning post, he, he doesn't, he didn't look like he was slowing down and he looked like he was, um, you know, he looked to me like a horse that won't have any, look, you don't ever know for sure until you go that extra two and a half furlongs in a Cheltenham Gold Cup at a pace that, you know, that there's no let up in. So, um, there was no doubt he'd be the horse he'd want to ride. It's a pretty obvious thing to say, but he's straightforward. I know he fell at last year's Cheltenham mm -hmm. Festival, but he looks a little bit neater and a little bit short, more sure-footed. He's not as exuberant in terms of, I don't think he's less, I think he's more likely to look after himself and put down and, and get out the other side than do what he did last year. So a lot of reasons why he's the price he is. Couldn't blame anyone for him being that price. You can try and make Statler, Obviously, won a uh, you know won the national hunt chase last year. Stays really well. If well, stamina it, tests of Cheltenham will be far more up his street than what we got at Leopardstown. Yeah, and look, Barry will tell you the Gold Cup is normally run at a pretty. You know, every race is different. Every Gold mm. Cup is different, but it's normally run, run run at a pretty strong pace, and you need to really stay. And then you're looking at the English horses. You know, could you make a case for Protectorat, who Dan Skelton thought he didn't have him as right as he had him for Haydock? He actually ran on a little bit like a horse that maybe he did get tired. You could say the same for Noble Yates. Maybe he wasn't as as wound up for the race at Cheltenham as he had been at entry. You're trying to pick out little snippets as to why they could run better. And they both of them looked like they kept going at Cheltenham, but still be disappointed that Hoyson Yor beat them. So I don't think if you were galloping the shump, I don't I think you'd be happy. I think you'd be happy if you want him. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, definitely he's the he's he's a worthy favourite and he's the one you'd want to be on. Um I'd agree with a lot of what AP said. You know, he was very relaxed. He jumped better. His whole mindset was better through the race. Paul only really asked him a semi-serious question after the last, and it was instant reaction. He hit the line strong. He galloped away past the line. It was 300, 400 yards later that he got him pulled up. So all those things reflect well as it guards the trip. Um, but the race was run at an average pace. The big dog was there competitive when he fell at the second last. You know, he, he's a good horse, but he's a handicapper. He was beaten in the Welsh National. Um, so I'm not saying he won't get the trip, but he hasn't proved he will get it. Um, you'd always worry about a horse with that level of pace. Will they actually see it out to travel into the race so much easier? And all of a sudden they have to find reserves. You know, you've horse like Native River, horse like that over the years, they dig out, you know, they're, they're proper battlers. I was kind of interested in Noble Yates the last day. Um, on reflection, he was running without cheek pieces. I thought he ran a good race. Probably didn't have the toughest time in the world. Um, protect the rat. I'd agree with AP. Dan Skelton um, mentioned afterwards that he might have just left him a bit short. He looked to run that way. He travelled strongly, hit a flat spot and finished well. So those to me would be the two with the, you know, that have proven stamina. Um, protect the rat. I think he'd be better on slower ground than better ground. But if there is a hole to be found in Gallop and the Champ, I think it's those two because they have that they have that stamina level that isn't, say, answered with Gallop and the Champ. But he is the one you'd want to be on. But, you know, he just hasn't got up that hill yet in the Gold Cup. Yes. We, we only know what we've seen, you know what I mean? And we can't, you know, like if Dan Skelton did, to be fair to Dan Skelton, he has become, he obviously is a very good trainer, but because he's been proven, especially this year, that he's become a very good target trainer. And if he thought that, you know, that the Gold Cup is the day that I want Protector at for, and Emmett Mullins may have been the same, we don't know. The only reason the only reason I said because of the Cotswold chase, the two of them actually looked like they were going, like when they turned in, they thought they were going, not, mm. they were going to be well beaten. And if you actually watch them at the winning post, the two of them were nearly get, it was looking like they were getting their second wind and staying on again. So, so we don't really know. Yeah, um, but they're, they're, I think they're better than that I think, form. Yeah. And take nothing away from High Senor yeah. or Sounds Russian, two quality horses. But I think there's potential for a bigger step forward mm. for Noble Yates and Protector Rat. Mitigating circumstances, that form can therefore mm. be reversed. But at this current stage, neither Rita would be put off Galloping Deschamps by any means. But in terms of a selection, though, if I had to put you to your name or colours to a matter in terms of a selection at this stage. Well, he is the one you'd want to be on. Um, but where's the value outside of that? You could go for me, as we said, Noble Yates or Protector Rat, but Protector Rat has possibly proven at that level, having been third in the Gold Cup. Flying the British flag. Well done, yeah, Barry. AP? <laughs> yeah, look, uh, there, you could go into the Cheltenham Gold Cup and say, yeah, there's been better horses gone in there with better form than Gallop and the Champ when they've got beat. Um, I, I actually think, I, I think Statler will run well. I don't know whether he's got the class to win a Gold Cup. He just looks like he's got a lot of stamina and 
just because Willie Mullins trained him as well. But I, look, I, I, there's no doubt that they'd want to ride Gallop and Deschamps. He, yeah. he, he could be, I'm not saying he's a Cotto star or a horse of that level, but he could be a horse that could win at all those trips. You know, he yeah. looks like a horse that mm. obviously is one over two and a half miles. Not all Gold Cup horses can do that in Native Rivers. Even a horse as good as Best Mate was more of a Gold Cup horse than even though he won a King George. Uh, you know, he was more of a, that type of a staying, mm. even galloper than, than a horse that, had, that could have done everything. Gallop and Deschamps at the moment, just looks that like he could do everything. But and has that versatility. Into... Versatility yeah. and class, the Galifin does shop, yeah. but you would just be giving a favourable mention to Statler all the same. So that is the opinion from the lads on the Gold Cup. It's been a bit of a blockbuster one, admittedly. Thank you so much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe to the William Hill YouTube channel. Leave us a comment below, any opinions that you may have on what we've discussed this week, and we'll be back again with you next week. <laughs>